Real people, real celebrities, real talk. Join the Breakfast Club. Blast off in your Weekday ear. morning, 6 to 10. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We have a young lady with us. Her album's in stores today. Her first time on The Breakfast Club. She's finally come sit in the hot seat. That's right. <laughs> Mrs. Shanti. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. They the fur gang. Everybody in here got on fur coats. Shanti. It's cold outside. Her sisters. <laughs> That's her oh, mama. mother. Oh, damn. You trying to, you trying okay. to holler? Uh-oh. I'm just saying. She <laughs> they said that you guys go to the clubs and there's no place for people to sit because of all the fur coats everywhere. Uh-oh. You starting that early? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did read that in the paper, though. I'm sure you saw that. I heard about that. I did. Mm-hmm. So where do we begin? Well, first know, of all, let's start, start? Off, let's start off with the new situation. She has a new situation. You left major and you went independent this time around. Yes. Why did you go independent? Um, Between 2009 and 2012-ish, I got offered seven deals from majors. Mm -hmm. And each of them involved a 360. And for me, the integrity of that, I just, it couldn't sit with me. Because that was before they were offering Mm carve-outs. And I felt like I built too much to have them dig that much into my pocket. So it was kind of like a choice and a push. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it it was scary. It was super scary. I remember being in L.A. like, damn, did I just, like, commit career suicide you know what i'm saying like Mm -hmm. it was really really scary but we went into survival mode i have an amazing team and i felt like this is you know what we needed to do so So you could have did a 360 if there were some carve outs that would allow you to keep your money for certain things like yeah something reputable you Mm -hmm. know what i mean like it i they just they just weren't good back then they were way worse than they are now Mm -hmm. i think and why did you leave murder inc what was the reason for leaving murder inc at the time well to be honest it's not like i left murder inc dissolved Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, after the indictment, you know, after everything that happened with that situation, I think our last situation was with Universal. Mm-hmm. And that was, like, you know, on a thread. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And so after that last album, that was it. And then, you know, situations happened with Josh, situations happened with Herb. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. we got to make something pop, you know? So... You had stated before that you felt like you were very loyal throughout. Your name Absolutely. and your picture was everywhere Absolutely. with things that you really weren't involved with. Oh, God, he came but, up here and said otherwise. Yeah, he said, of he course he did. He said he, he felt like you weren't loyal at all. Of course he did, you know, and it's it's crazy. I, like, Irv is very emotional. You know He's what I'm a saying? I'm a cancer. Exactly. Too. Yeah. Oh, that explains a lot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> explains a lot. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, Irv is. That was a lot of stress that he dealt with, and I feel like a lot of things, a lot of statements he made were coming from more of an emotional place than the truth Mm -hmm. because it was very obvious that I I rolled till the wheels fell off, the car caved in, the windshield blew out, the mufflers, you know what I mean? I rolled out the whole time. I went to the trial. I was in Canada shooting a film, and it specifically stated in my contract, I cannot leave. I came to the trial three, four times. Yikes. You know what I mean? So for him to say, oh, she's not loyal and she didn't want to throw up the ends, that's not true at all. So I feel like now it's kind of like my chance to be brave enough to talk about the situation because I'm kind of like on a whole new page, a whole new movement now. When, when, did, you realize, to, when oh. did you realize it was time to be business and no more family with the ink? Like it was time to separate yourself? <laughs> it was hard because the love was genuine, you know? Like we went through good things, we went through bad things, so... I think it was kind of obvious after the last album in 2008, it's like we, me and Irv didn't speak for like six or seven years. You know what I mean? And it was, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was done. It really wasn't too much to hash out. And then like we had a conversation, um, what was it? Me and Ja did something like hip hop honors or something. And we had a conversation to kind of, you know, for me to give my point of view, him to give his point of view. And we kind of agreed to disagree on a lot. Mm And, you know, that was it. I mean, I mean, I still consider them family, but it's just we're on different paths right now. Like, me and Ja spoke to Ja last night. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, we, we still speak. You know, it's still all love. Ja is still my brother at the like end of the day. you still called him on his birthday. Yeah, mm-hmm. called him on his birthday. <laughs> you know, so he's still my brother. It's just we're on different paths right now. Did you get paid financially from Irv and Murder, Inc.? Did you, did you make sure you get all your money or was it? Or did they little mow you? <laughs> Nah, I got mine mm-hmm. for sure. I write my stuff, so mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to not, you know. Were you and Irv really lovers? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. That was a big rumor that that you and him were, were lovers, and that's why he was so emotional and so hurt. I know. And that the reason that that you know basically that you you guys dissolved was because of Nelly. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, there were I mean, there were people on that label that said Herb couldn't get no work done because he was so destroyed over you. They were like he was not handling his business. I mean, I can see why. You are a distraction. <laughs> Look why. I mean, I can see why. You know. Um, I mean, I heard a lot of stuff too. You know, did me and Nelly kind of ruffle some feathers in a way? Hey, probably. <laughs> You some feathers I mean? are ruffled again now because it seems like you guys broke up and then there's rumors that y'all are back together. You guys have been out and about together. Uh-oh. And I do think people want to see you two together because y'all were dating for so long. Even though you wouldn't publicly say it, it was just like, okay, we know they're a couple. <laughs> then you guys, you know, broke up. You said you would never get back with him. But now y'all are at least friends again. Um, I mean, I will say that there was a space where it was bad. Like, it was really bad. You know, are we cool? Yeah. We seen y'all okay. Super Bowl weekend. Y'all look a you little more cool. You didn't see nothing on Super Bowl, Envy. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what makes it, what makes it bad though? Like what made it, what made it bad? Um, I feel like when you go through things, <clears throat> when a person is hurt, when a man is hurt and a woman is hurt, I think men deal with hurt differently. I feel like um, we handle our emotions differently, and there were a lot of things said and done publicly that should not have been, and I feel like. There was a foundation set, and those things shouldn't have happened. You know what I mean? So it got bad. What hurt him? Because I remember it was rumored Bossa was saying that you were cheating on him. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. When he was up here, he did say, he was like, she's the one that, that messed up. Why has got to be me? He was like, why does everybody assume yeah, it's the man? Yeah, he did say, why do people assume it's the man? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's really the hot seat of Shanti. No, no. I mean, look, we both definitely made mistakes in a lot of things. Um what I will say is things do come full circle. You know, um, it was, you know, it was both people. Nelly must be the one. You can tell when somebody talks and pauses when they're talking about a person. They think about what they're going to say. No, I'm not. That doesn't mean that. That's you know you're going to text right after, like, so what'd you say about me? Is he the one, though? That's the one mama likes and, you know, like, yeah, so you need to be with Chandi. Um, Nelly is a really good person. He has a really, really good heart, you know. <laughs> He's the one. He's the one. That's the one. But then it seemed like, and men do this a lot, right? They go through whatever, they break up with the girl, and then they try to bounce right back with somebody else. And it seemed like publicly he was out with another girl, and people were saying that was his girlfriend, and now she seems like she's hurt. But I, they say women, we take our time, and we get over something before we move on, while men just jump right back, and then later on they realize, damn, I'm not over it. So how, did you feel away when you saw him out and about with somebody else? Um, <clears throat> did I feel away? Who is I'm this s- bitch, Cornell? <laughs> 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 Who is this bitch you on bossing with, Cornell? I mean, <laughs> Cornell. <laughs> hey, he put it all in there. You call him Cornell or Nelly? I don't call him Nelly. <laughs> Cornell. Um, let me see. Did I feel away? I'm very smart, and I know him, and I know, I knew what the facade was. So, you mm. know, that girl don't like you when she sees you, though. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it hard to date in this era with the with the social media because you might be in Miami, he might be in New York, and then you'll just see something on a blog that morning? I mean, it's a hindrance, I think, to every celebrity if they're trying to do something that they don't necessarily want to be publicized or whatever. You just have to find ways to go around it, though. There's ways. Or, were you dating Deshaun Jackson? <laughs> that was the rumor. Um... No, <laughs> we were hanging. We I went to a football game. He's real cool people. He's super talented. That sounds like a date. You guys went Definitely to a football game like together. A date. What do you mean? I can't go to the game. I went say, to the next game. And they said Nelly got mad and challenged him to a 40-yard dash for your heart. Because <laughs> <laughs> he said he was an from? athlete, too. No truth to that? Oh, my gosh. Um... No. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Sure, is definitely a competitor, though. I'm sure definitely. you had some great, great people actually trying to scoop you, though, once you were single and back on the market. Listen, I had a lot of fun, Reg. Whoa. Fun. <laughs> you know, you single, so you need some help. So wait, so does that, does that mean that when you guys get back together, you got to tell him everything that happened? Oh, she's just using the word when, like, it's just... I'm like, y'all not together now. No, no, so that's you, not where so I was going with it. That is not where I was going with it at all. Don't deny it. Y'all should just be like, look, we together, that's it, period. Oh, my god! But did you have to tell him, like, all right, well, this person tried to holler at me. You know your boy was trying to holler at me also. <laughs> oh, I'm sure man. that happened, too. Um, Let me see. What I will say is... You got to let him know. Being single, 
it's it was kind of surprising to see who who came after it. Right. That's what I will say. It was. Like, you was supposed like, oh. to be his boy. She came after it. She didn't even say came after her. Came after it. <laughs> the dude, the dude Pun the, intended. All right. The dude with the mask from the St. Lunatics tried to holler. Oh, you. stop it! <laughs> Cut that God. out right now. <laughs> oh my goodness. I wanted to know: Does your grandmother own a a, a dance studio in Long Island? Here we go. <laughs> I, I, we got, oh we got it. Here we go. We got Here we go. <laughs> Well, that would be kind of hard <laughs> since my grandmother's are dead. Okay, okay. So that's oh not my the, God. The that's so awkward. Jesus Christ. Because there was rumors that your grandmother owned a dance studio, and that's where this picture of Prodigy and a tutu Prodigy came out. Prodigy blames you. Oh, Prodigy blames no, you for no. that picture that's, of the tutu. Okay, Bernice Johnson is a dance studio in Queens. Mm -hmm. Bernice Johnson is Chaka's grandmother, Prodigy. Uh-huh. Chaka, that's what they call him? That's his name. Chaka? Mm hmm Oh, okay. So... Nobody knew that, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Albert or something. Oh, my God. Go so ahead, so something else. Nobody knew that, but go ahead. Okay, so I had absolutely nothing to do with that. I went to that dance school. Me, mm. my choreographer, a lot of people went to that dance school. He went to that dance school. I had absolutely no I don't even think I, yeah, I did meet Jay, but me and Jay never even had conversations about anything. Hey, what's up? How are you? And that was it. So let's clear the record. So you did I not give I Herb the tutu picture of Prodigy that was passed and on to Did he Jay. have on a tutu? I don't even remember the picture. I don't, I don't, it like a downside, I don't think it was a tutu. Outfit. I don't think it was a tutu. Yeah, I mean, guys had costumes in dance recitals. <laughs> but was he I ever had, in a dance recital with you? He... I don't I do think ballet so. with Prodigy from no, 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 no. Don't even start that. Don't even start that. But honestly, I had absolutely nothing to do with that. Right. Absolutely nothing. Now, this record, uh, Never Should Have, uh, is on your album. They say that's yes. about Nelly, or rumored to be about Nelly. Never Should Have is a record that talks about um, me and him are going back and forth. And it's weird because when I wrote the record, it was talking about things that happened between us. When I was singing a record, me and him were actually Skyping. So we were, you know, we were cool and we were talking about it. So at that time we were good. But when I wrote it, I wrote it about past things. So it's, I guess it's kind of weird how everything came together with mm -hmm. the record. He loves that record though, to be honest. Now, now if, he, you... if he proposed to you, would you say yes? <laughs> Damn, <laughs> oh man. I thought I was up here to talk about the album, <laughs> Braveheart. Well, That's I, his story. I'm sure a lot of what right you now. wrote on that album <laughs> has to do with relationships, right? A lot of everything to do with that album kind of mirrors everything that I've gone through in the past few years. Every record comes from a real place. Mm -hmm. You know, I wrote every record and I feel like, again, this was my opportunity to be brave enough to be honest. I'm very vulnerable and very sincere on mm -hmm. the album. I haven't put music out since 2008, so it's like I have to give. You so how, how so I'm going to assume First Real Love's about Nelly, then. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? Let me call him. Because y'all are asking a lot of Nelly questions. So how have you been eating since then? You said since 2008. So, yes. it's, you know, it's it's a long time. Did you Very just tell that nigga you get your publisher? <laughs> no, you just well, tell publisher you write slows everything. up a little bit. So, wait, what was the question? How, how are you still eating from all that? Because you, you weren't doing, you didn't do an album. Right. I you, mean, she was on the show Army Wives. I did Broadway. Right. Mm -hmm. I did Army Wives. Mm -hmm. I write. And see, sometimes people forget early. I was writing for J-Lo, one of J-Lo's biggest records ever. I wrote mm -hmm. for Christina Milian. I wrote for a couple of pop groups. And that, it really does. And I'm going to be honest, I don't really like to spend my own money. Nice. I know how to save. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So Not with that fur. <laughs> in that who, bag. Who says I bought it? No, oh, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> I'm now, just kidding. Now, also, with, um, do you feel like you were you were too sheltered with Irv? And I said this to Ja, too, because when you guys came out, it was kind of like you were untouchable. Like, you guys didn't know the DJs. You guys didn't go to the clubs. Like, you were just... And we said y'all never spoke to him. No, nah, they never spoke to nobody. They were never out. Like, seeing this Ashanti and seeing Ja now, you never That's seen why that before. had a little grudge. Oh, I no man. Grudge with yeah, you did. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I you mean, felt you know like what? she won't talk to me. Shut you know up. what's and crazy? And they light skin, so you know. That's a whole different <laughs> level of sensitivity. Oh, my goodness. Go ahead. You know, honestly, it's funny. Me and Zlo, we were talking the other day, and he kind of said the same thing. He was like, yo, people felt like you, you know, you people don't know this side of you. People don't know this is your personality or whatever. And it was kind of like the gift and the curse because it was, it was a good thing because you want to maintain a certain mystique but mm -hmm. you still have to be a real person you still have to be approachable right you know so i think what irv was doing he was 
he was trying to carry the whole my artists are on a pedestal and we this and we right. and not in a negative like nasty mm-hmm. you know cocky way but in a way to kind of just preserve it mm-hmm. but i think it should have been a better balance you know what i mean Absolutely. especially for me when it came to the dudes it was just like nobody <laughs> you know it was always like a fort around you but know what i mean they got at you early though i mean i remember <laughs> they going at you you they were telling you you can't sing mm. They were messing with your hair at one time, talking about <laughs> your sideburns at one time. Mm-hmm. How did you deal with all that? You know about G-Unit? You no, know everybody about... at one time. Like, oh. They were criticizing the show. I mean, when, when you hot out. and you on fire, you got to expect that. Mm-hmm. You know, I when you're number one and you're killing it, you have to expect. It comes with the territory. Mm-hmm. So you have to be strong enough. If you're strong enough to be number one, you got to be strong enough to endure the the the, the, the BS. I don't and, know. And how did you deal me. with the whole G-Unit stuff? Because you guys are pretty much... In the same area. You yeah, know, where Irv moved out and Irv was Westchester and Ja was Jersey. You stayed Long Island, they Right. And we're going to give out your address in a minute now. You got to stop for a minute. He... In the same area, Queens, <laughs> Long Island. So you would run into him all the time. So how did you handle that? Um, honestly, I didn't. I never ran into any of them. I mm-hmm. ran into 50 twice. Mm-hmm. Once in Vegas and mm-hmm. once in L.A. And um, Didn't Nelly make him apologize to you? He did. At the VMAs in Vegas. That was hilarious. Explain he that did. story. You got to tell us now. Oh, my God. We were in Vegas. Um, I think it was during one of the commercials. This was the the awards where Tommy Lee and Kid Rock got into it. So mm-hmm. we were sitting right behind them. So we were both walking into the auditorium, whatever, the seats. And 50 came out. And Nelly was just like, yo, you got to apologize, man. You got to apologize. And then 50 was just like, all right, yo, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, he was <laughs> laughing. Everybody was dying laughing. I was like, all right. You know, it wasn't like a big thing or whatever. But after that... It was just like, I mean, by that time anyway, everybody kind of, the beef was kind of dead. Right. right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was just like, okay, cool. Did anything they ever said affect you? Like when like when they was making comments about your sideburns, did you ever like, like, mom, my sideburns? Hey. You mom. know what it was? <laughs> no, you know what was crazy? I'm going to keep it all the way 100. Okay. I have nice hair. I ain't even going to lie. So, you know, when you have <laughs> yeah. good hair... Your hair is a little sideburns, bit. I mean. <laughs> right, you got sideburns. <laughs> Some people love sideburns. This is what I thought, though. On TV, mm-hmm. on film, and in pictures, it looks a little different than it does in <laughs> person. Yeah, yeah. So when you're looking it in the did. mirror, you know, you're like, okay, it's down, cute. You know it's what a little saying? more That's pronounced. Soft, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but on film and on camera, it may look a little bit different, you know? So I looked at it like, oh, they some whack, you know. For saying whatever, right. I'm a girl. You know that's real feminine for you to be saying. And then I'll be like, damn, this look a little, <laughs> <laughs> it look a little funny. So you start to get an extra maintenance to them or something? Or? Extra, <laughs> extra maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> no, this guy right here. And now, no, I just made sure they look good on on film and on camera and in person. Right. Now you had a, a stalker situation, right? Yes. This guy was stalking you. He was sending your mom messages. Yeah. And then he ended up um, getting two years in jail. And then he was still tweeting you. Yeah. How the hell he tweeting from jail? No, when he, no, when he got out. Oh. That was nuts. Um, He was sending, like, pictures of my car when I would be places. He was sending Damn. pictures of my house. He was sending pictures of his package, you know. And his it penis. Was, yeah. Okay. And it was just, it was not cool. That's it something you have cool. to take seriously. Well, you, Absolutely. You need to make sure he bought the album. That could be, like, the president of your he, fan you club. You know what? He can't, though, because he's back in jail, which is crazy. And what's really crazy is he was in the same cell as Lil Wayne. So when me and Wayne was in Miami, he was telling me, like, yo, sis, this dude is crazy. I was in there with your stalker, and he told me this whole story. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. It's, and you know who told me first? Baby. Me and Baby were on the phone, mm-hmm. and he was like, what you got going on, Shanti? You got a stalker? You know, and he said, yo, he in the same cell as Wayne. What I kind said, of stuff was oh, he telling him? He was, you don't even want to know. Does he think, is he like the stalker, like he thinks he knows you and he's really communicating? You know what he said? He said, um, Shanti made eye contact with me at... <laughs> At a concert, I'm serious, no lie, at a concert in Chicago, and that told me that she wanted me. And I was just like, you know, you have to assume that there's something that's not all the way right. right. You know what I mean? You got so, a stalker. Yeah, you got a good you stalker You got to do right that now. right stuff from prison every he's day. He's not in prison, he's Ooh. in a mental institution. Oh. All right, same difference. Right. <laughs> now, is it, is it, it, was a, is it, it was a rumor you were signing the YMCMB because you said you talked to Baby and Wayne a lot. That was a rumor. Um, we were very, very close to doing something really monumental. And then they messed up and signed Christina Milian. He was like, hell no, I'm not going over there. Oh, my God. I did not say that. No. Um, you know, sometimes when attorneys get into things, they kind of mess situations up. You know what I mean? But... You know, me and Baby are still cool, mm-hmm. and we'll, you know, we, you never know. We'll see what happens. Plus, you want to get royalties and stuff. 
Yeah, they don't pay nobody over there. Man, that's what they, <laughs> you definitely oh, gonna man. get a little mold over there. <laughs> you ain't gotta worry about that. Oh man. All right, so Braveheart, the album is coming out and it's on Tuesday. Yes. March fourth. Yes. You're excited about it? Super over the top excited. The reason why I'm so excited is because I love the body of work. Like, it's scary when you put your all into something and you're not really satisfied, you don't like it, you may be like, mm, and you're unsure. But when you're confident about the body of work and the music, it's like that's all that matters. You know, you could ride out like, yo, I'm proud of this, whichever way it goes. So I'm, I'm super excited. And the reactions to the music and the album has been phenomenal. So I'm, I'm excited. How, how have you improved as a live artist? Because I always thought you made good songs and you recorded good in the studio, but live your vocal abilities were kind of... Shaky. Um, I think in the beginning, I learned a lot. I learned about in-ears. I learned that you can't be trying to move around and things sound good. And there was a lot of things when I'd be like, no, I don't sound like that. That ain't really how it sound. You know, so I think just becoming more confident, you know, and, and perfecting your craft over time, that's what does it. You know, oh, can she sing? Oh, can she? oh she can't sing. She can't. Oh, I don't, that's studio. None of that was happening. We mm -hmm. didn't have auto-tune when I was making my albums. You know what I'm saying? I go mm -hmm. into the studio now. First thing the engineer says is, how much tune? I don't eat tuna. I don't need, <laughs> <tuna>. <laughs> I don't need that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I definitely have grown a whole lot, you know, from... And it's funny because it's like when I came on the scene with Murder, Inc., what they did, they used to take Jaws Rider and give it to me and then just take his name off. So I didn't know about monitors and... This, and I wasn't drinking Hennessy and Cristal in the back. You know what I'm saying? Like, they kind of treated me like a rapper because that's all they knew. They didn't have females with R&B uh, singers on the label. So right. I had to learn a lot. And it ain't excusing anything, but I had to learn a lot. Right. Know, now, how are you in. and your mom so tight, you know, as being your manager? Because you look at anybody who has a parent as a manager, they usually fire them every once in a while. Whether <laughs> like it's Beyonce, mm -hmm. whether it was Usher. So how are you and your mom so tight and, and still working with each other? Because we been tight before the industry my mom and i have an amazing relationship and it's crazy because like all of my friends like if they were going through things with their parents or in life they would come to talk to my mother so our relationship is not oh because of the music industry it's more that we have a relationship and not an authoritative mother daughter i'm telling you what to do kind now of thing. how close is close like if the first time you and nelly had sex did you tell <laughs> go back and tell mom <laughs> mom it was like this <laughs> like is it that close no did mom ask <laughs> How big the package was. You <laughs> said I sure oh! did. My father's listened to this, Charlene. Oh. <laughs> Let me see. Did I tell my mom? Let me see. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably did. <laughs> and your mom goes with you to the clubs and everything. Sometimes she does. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes she's out. Um, she likes, you know, my, my mom is like Mama Razzi. She mm -hmm. gets all the footage. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's good to have her there. You know, we collect, we do mm -hmm. a little bit business, and she did, she she collects the footage as well. So you got a little ratchet in you. I'm seeing you now. Oh, you got, here he goes. I'm yeah, serious. Every, you got to get to see you got to see, you to see like, I think with social networking, you get to see it now. You've seen uh -oh. it with uh, Mariah. You've seen it with Tony. And I see it with, she hanging out with Slow on the middle of a, on a, on a tank in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> she's doing a strip club. She's, she's in the hood. You know, one thing about Ashanti, too, is that you never really beef with other female singers, which is a hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a period of time when they said you and Keisha Cole didn't get along, but then y'all did something together. Mm -hmm. Was there ever any friction between you two, or was that a rumor? You know what it was? Me, I call it K-Sizzle. Me and her were talking, and there were a lot of things. She had reached out to Irv to do a record together with me, like a full album. Mm -hmm. And I never knew about it. And I don't know what Irv said to her, but it was something to the extent of, You no. ain't on her level. <laughs> Knock it off, Keisha. That's what you told me. I mean, <laughs> look, I don't, I don't know what was said, but she took it away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I was like, damn, that's messed up because mm -hmm. I never even knew. Right. You know what I mean? So, and that happened a lot. Like, as I, in 2008, as I started working with different producers, like, Jermaine Dupree, Pharrell, Polo, a lot of different people from different areas. Everybody was like, yo, we, we didn't know you were this cool because the perception was very different. See? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, LT Hutton, he actually produced this single. Oh, that's I my got guy. It. He loves you. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He told me that y'all are cool, too. He loves you. But, um, yeah, it was crazy. And I was like, why, why, why do people have that perception? Because when I get around, I'm not like that. Mm -hmm. So that example is kind of... Why? How many bridges did you have to repair that were burnt because of the murder ink situation? 
Um, <clears throat> and you probably didn't even know they were burnt till you went across them. Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't want to put it out there like they burnt bridges, but it was definitely a precedent set that was not representing me 100%. And I would say I had to do a lot of work changing perception of people thinking I was a certain way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if I went in the studio after the session, they're like, damn, we didn't know you was that cool. Like that ain't, you know? So I had to make sure that when I went, I'm myself and I'm representing myself. Right. Did it ever get to a point where you were just fed up with the industry? Like after the whole FBI thing and, you know, not being on the major anymore, did it ever say, I don't want to do this no more? I mean, it definitely has gotten to places where I feel like this is bull BS. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I felt like, you know, this is not how it's supposed to be. You're not supposed to have to put in 10 times more work and get less to pay. You know what I'm saying? And I felt like um, just conceptually understanding the game and the agendas that people have and the fact that people look at you as a commodity and not a person. Once you understand that, then you don't take things personal. It's about just adapting and understanding it. Mm. Like you, you talk a lot of mess. You know what I'm saying? But I don't take it too personal. No, I never said no. <laughs> I ain't never said nothing crazy. Oh, now. yes, you did, just, Charlamagne. What, what he say, I just questioned your live vocal ability. No, nah, you said some other shit. You what said some other stuff. What'd he say? You, look, look at him. Don't back check now, Charlamagne. <laughs> she said right here. You said what some other stuff. You said <laughs> some other stuff. But look, I ain't never take it personal like that. And it's funny because people was like, well, why she don't want to go up to the breakfast club? And no, it wasn't that I, I didn't want to. I didn't feel like I was ready to come up here yet. Because now I got music. I got an album. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. And now because Charlamagne be talking then and then. What did I say? Y'all tell me what I said. Y'all keep track. I don't know, but I don't I like I wish we had some live people to uh, type in. Nah, but it's all good. I don't like being in the club with Charlamagne or really walking down the street with him or anything. <laughs> no, I get blamed for a anything lot of stuff get, I ain't really doing up. now just because. And I'm just like, a casualty. What? <laughs> yeah. what mommy saying? Yeah, I don't know. She says, um, <laughs> she, she, she says, smack him. Or... No. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go, mama. No, I'm like that. <laughs> now, after this album, would you do another album independent? Um... Let me see. I probably would. I probably, it depends mm -hmm. because there are a lot, there are things percolating right now with phone calls and situations. Mm -hmm. It's about how I'm going to benefit the most. Right. You know what I mean? This time around, it was my first time being a CEO, owning a record label. Did you like it? Did you enjoy doing it yourself or was it too much work? Oh, man. It's now you breathed a sigh like, hell no, it's stressful, <laughs> Oh, my God. It's so much. Like, so much that I didn't know that falls on your shoulder. Like, you have to creatively design your layout for your album and pick the colors and pick the stylists and pick the record, pick the producers, executive produce, write your records, sign an invoice, declare if this budget is right. Did you get 30%? Check your publishing. It's like so much. Right. Then you got to have a radio team. If that mm -hmm. ain't working, okay, what are we going to do? Who's in this area? Y'all don't got reps in Houston? What happened? Like, it's a lot. Right. You know what I'm saying? So me learning as I go, I made some very expensive mistakes. Mm -hmm. Very expensive. So would I do it again? Maybe with this knowledge and a different foundation or platform? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's, now I know. Right. Yeah, it's better for you now. When you have a team in place, you know what they're supposed to be doing because right. you don't went and had to do it yourself. Right. So now you can say, well, how come you didn't do this? And how come you didn't do that? And now exactly. you have those contacts exactly. with people that you can hit them up and say, okay, is this person doing what they're supposed to do? Right, exactly. So I have more knowledge. So Is, mu is music your main passion now still? Because you dibbled and dabbled in acting a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, what I'll say is I love I love writing a record and seeing the reaction of how it can affect another person that I don't even know. So music is definitely my passion and it's what's in my heart. As far as a paycheck is concerned, television is where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm trying to get a show immediately. Okay. You know what I mean? Like if, for instance, there's one talk show host, she's a female, and I know for a fact she gets like 32 million a year to work two hours a day for four days a week. Who the hell is that? Sarah. Who? They said, mm -mm, don't say it. <laughs> don't tell like, Charlamagne, he's gonna tell all too. of us. But talk she's she's boss. But what I'm saying is television is where it's at. So you wanna be a talk show host? I mean, something that makes sense for me that it doesn't look like a reach, that I'm still having fun and that we can bring something a little slightly different to the table. You could have a scripted series like Eve had her show. That probably okay. could be more than two hours a day, but 
Right. Something like okay. that. So right. listen, you're walking out of this studio, right? Mm-hmm. Tay Hackett comes walking down the hall. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> stupid. <laughs> She accidentally brushes up against your foot. <laughs> <Do> you, <laughs> what, what do you do? <laughs> she, she, said, she, she got mama there. Mama said, I'll take care of it. I'll do the bill. She said, mama said, I got it. Uh, I got it if you want go. it. I got it. There you go. Is, you, he, is, he, is he allowed to be friends with her at all anymore? Like, you know, still keeping communication? Like, we still... Or That's what? Nelly's alleged boo thing. Who? <laughs> I don't right All right. Album so stores. <laughs> right now. Album right. in stores right now. Pre order right now. I need that. Do We're have, indie over here. Do you ever have to keep men off, mommy? <laughs> oh, what? my God. It's so annoying. You know why Charlamagne's asking? Because he, he wants Shut to holler. Oh, oh, he wants to holler. He wants to holler. Oh, that's the question. It is so <laughs> annoying. I swear, since I was like seven years old, I used to have to say something to dudes on my mom. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> Steve Harvey? Jay Leno what? is really bad. Damn. Steve Harvey was trying to get that mama? Oh, my God. He pushed me out the way. The first time we went to L.A. to do an interview, he was like, hey, we got a shot. Who that? That's a mama? <laughs> Tell a mama to come over. I'm like, are you serious? Ain't he married? No, this was a long time ago. Oh. This was like, oh, or We're not snitching it. FYI, he don't wash his hands when he pees. I used to work with him <laughs> at a radio station in New York, and he never... Ever wash his hands when oh he peed. So when he pushed you out the way, he did it with pissy hands. All right, Charlamagne. The album in stores yeah. right now. Make sure you get it. Braveheart, we appreciate you joining us. All Took right. your ass long enough. <laughs> she did a great job, though. I had to Thank call you. on the phone one time, like, come on. She's like, I'm coming. I'm coming. All right. <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. It's Miss Ashanti. Hey.